Henry David Thoreau's 1854 classic, Walden, is a fascinating book that has been read very differently at different times. Walden recounts, in literary form, Thoreau's experience of living a rustic life on the shores of Walden Pond near Concord, Massachusetts. In the second half of the 20th century especially, readers were fascinated by Thoreau as a proponent of a back-to-nature lifestyle. The idea of leaving our overly mechanized lives behind in order to live simpler lives closer to nature fascinated the 1960s generation, some of whom actually built wilderness cabins and communes in emulation of Thoreau. He also played a role in inspiring books such as Into the Wild. However, Thoreau can also be seen as the great-grandparent of the modern minimalist movement, as he famously reduced one of Walden's core messages to a two-word imperative, simplify, simplify. This is arguably Thoreau's most useful message for the 21st century. In a sense, Thoreau did something altogether extraordinary, arguably far more extraordinary than living in a semi-wilderness setting, yet nonetheless something that all of us should arguably do at some point in our lives. He stepped out of his regular routine to ponder the sort of life that he considered worth living. In practice, he took a couple of years of his life to, as he put it, front only the essential facts of life. He wanted to strip away all the stuff and crap surrounding him to find the meaningful life under it. Among other things, he considered housing, clothing, and food. Distressed by his neighbors, who even in the 1850s were building increasingly lavish houses, Thoreau pondered what would be the simplest dwelling possible for a single person. His answer? A wooden version of a single person tent with the floor just big enough for a bedroll. To keep things simple from the start, he proposed recycling a used railway storage box, which could be purchased for under a dollar at the time for the purpose. Ultimately, he settled on a larger structure, which at 150 feet may seem lavish by comparison, but is nonetheless about the size of an average garden shed, which his cabin at Walden Pond resembled. When Thoreau turned his attention to clothing, he railed against the fashion industry, which even then was centered in Paris, for encouraging us to buy into fleeting trends. The head monkey in Paris puts on a traveler's cap, and all the monkeys in America do the same. Because every generation laughs at the old fashions, but follows religiously the new, Clothing was, at least is even more so today, being discarded as unfashionable when it was still quite usable. To simplify things, Thoreau suggested not giving in to the whims of fashion, instead to own just a few pieces of sturdy clothing, and for good measure, beware of all enterprises that require new clothes. With respect to food, Thoreau made repeated appeals for the simplicity of vegetarianism. I have no doubt that it is part of the destiny of the human race in its gradual improvement, he said, to leave off eating animals. As early as Walden, he also rejected imported foodstuffs like coffee and tea. His last work, unpublished in his lifetime, was a celebration of local and seasonal wild food, which he extolled as superior to the imported counterparts, such as oranges and tangerines and bananas, which were being shipped into the U.S. ports like nearby Boston by way of sailing ships. In general, through... Though he certainly was given to a share of philosophical musing, throughout his life, Thoreau repeatedly drew his and our attention to the most basic of our day-to-day needs, which he provocatively argued can be satisfied far more simply than we usually imagine. But Thoreau did something more, something bigger, and altogether extraordinary. He challenged us to ponder the role that we were given at birth. This has profound environmental implications. Think of life like a play, a theatrical performance that has been scripted for you. When you were born, you stepped into a role, exceptionally intricate, that was written long before you were even conceived. For example, where you would live, how you would get around, what you would eat, what you would wear, this was all spelled out for you in detail. It's not that you weren't given some latitude in playing the role. For example, you could choose the car that you wanted or could afford. However, you could not easily forgo having a car not if you wanted to play the role successfully, in other words, be seen as a success. Like many generations before, my generation lived the life scripted for us. In that sense, we did not take up Thoreau's challenge to reconsider the script handed to us. What's worse, in many ways, ours was an over-the-top performance in the role, as we did so many things bigger and more outlandishly. For example, 
in dramatic contrast to Thoreau, we live in houses that are two and a half times larger than those of our parents, which incidentally were already six times larger than Thoreau's cabin at Walnut Pond. The new generation coming on the scene, that of my students, cannot live the life scripted for them, as this would be environmentally disastrous. To some, this will be frustrating, perhaps even enormously so, as the pressure to conform to that role, which comes from a thousand directions in our culture, can be pretty intense. Even little things like forgoing a car and meat eating can be met with a backlash from those happily living the scripted role who see this as a threat to that way of life. If you happily accept the role handed to you, this might be especially frustrating. Yes, the generations that came before you had lots of things that you will not have. Let's face it, we had awesome amounts of stuff. However, it is not at all clear that any of this made us happy. Indeed, it has arguably done just the opposite. In any event, what this new generation needs to do is take up Thoreau's challenge and reconsider and rewrite the script. This can be seen as an opportunity, a huge and exciting one. However, can also be an enormous challenge. So my question is just what do you make of Thoreau and his challenge to an overly bloated life? Given that he is responding to a life in 19th century America, imagine what his reaction would be to our 21st century consumer world. Is Thoreau on to something? Should we all simplify? As usual, I will select a number of your comments and respond to them in a future episode.